Good afternoon and welcome to the Neutral Buoyancy Laboratory at NASA's Johnson Space Center in Houston. Astronauts Drew Foistel and Don Pettit are joining us today from the bottom of that 6.2 million gallon swimming pool where they've been testing some tools and ideas for ways that we can eventually train astronauts for moonwalks. They're taking a short break to answer some questions for us, which we've already gathered um, from social media, but you can still get yours in now using the hashtag AskNASA. We'll try and take a few before we wrap up. And for now, we'll dive right in. Drew, perhaps you could start us off by giving us a quick explanation of what you and Don are doing today. Well, thanks for the great introduction. As you said, we're at the bottom of the neutral buoyancy lab uh, working on development of the uh, Artemis program, and uh, we're, we're all working hard here at the Joplin Space Center in preparation for eventual landing on the moon target for 2024. One of the key challenges for us is developing our new spacesuits, and uh, I'm wearing that new spacesuit now. Uh, Don is wearing a suit that uh, is, is meant to complement this and the work that we're doing in the neutral buoyancy lab, but you can see as you look around us, we've got some mock-ups and simulations for the lunar surface, and uh, we're just practicing the basic uh, tools, uh, uh, development, and uh, techniques that are going to be required for us to explore the surface of the moon in the near future. Well, it looks very cool from here, so we're going to start right away with the social media questions. The first one um, is how much is being underwater like being on the moon? Well, that's a great question. I've never been to the surface of the moon, but uh, I've certainly been underwater plenty of times, and we're doing what we can to uh, take advantage of buoyancy in the underwater and develop uh, scenarios for the spacesuit that simulate a one-sixth G environment, which is gravity on the moon that is, is, uh, represents one-sixth of what we feel on Earth. So I can bounce gently in this spacesuit and, uh, and not uh, very unlike what I can do on Earth, and I can move around fairly freely. So we're trying to simulate that environment uh, utilizing the water and the buoyancy that uh, we can get out of it. And I think normally y'all are used to uh, floating as though you're in microgravity when you're here in the in the neutral buoyancy lab. Probably feels a little bit different. Yeah, typically we're using the neutral buoyancy lab to work on the space station in a micro or what we call sometimes a zero G gravity environment uh, where we're actually floating neutrally in the water column. And in this case, we add some weights so that we can actually walk on the soles of our feet and move around as if we're on a planetary surface. Very interesting. Uh, next question was, how long are you guys going to be underwater today? Uh, we will be underwater for about six hours uh, to in total, which is very similar to the length of time that we would plan for a typical lunar uh, spacewalk or lunar uh, EVA. And then uh, we also got a question about uh, the Apollo training for moonwalks. They wanted to know if this was very different than what the Apollo astronauts did. Uh, in fact, this is very similar to what the Apollo astronauts did in preparation for their missions to the moon. Uh, they utilized uh, not only the uh, neutral buoyancy lab or facility very much like it, but also other uh, weight offloading uh, apparatus that allow them to experience the gravity forces similar to what's on the moon. They also utilized um, aircraft uh, that can be, uh, we call that zero-G aircraft, but you can actually change the trajectory of an aircraft to create some uh, different gravity environments, and that's another facility that they use to practice for lunar spacewalking. All right, and we also had a question about the suits themselves. I know that y'all have been um, been testing some of the iterations for them underwater for a while now. Have you been able to give any feedback on the design to the engineers working on them? Absolutely. This suit has been in development for a number of years, uh, starting uh, two decades ago, and it's, uh, it's, it's fairly far into its development phase. Uh, we have some great capabilities with this suit that we don't experience in the, um, in the ISS, or zero gravity spacesuit. And particularly, one of the capabilities we have is walking. Uh, this suit has uh, articulating legs on it, uh, which is not something we use in a zero gravity environment, and that allows me to move and walk as if I'm walking on the surface of the, the Earth, and also allows me to bend down um, and inspect the, the surface of, of the moon and even pick up objects or reach over and do things that I couldn't normally do in a different type of a spacesuit. And so we've got a lot of capability. We also have great mobility with our hands and our arms. I can reach up and touch the top of the spacesuit. I can reach across and touch my other shoulder. 
These are not things that we can do in our uh, previous generation of spacesuits. So we're really happy about the development of this suit and what capabilities it's going to allow us on the surface of the moon. Visibility is also outstanding in that suit. Yeah, that was pretty impressive, the the kneeling down and picking up. And I think that's um, kind of some of the activities you've been working on today, right? Gathering samples and and uh, testing out some of the tools? Got some tools in development, our early generation tools, uh, simplified tools, uh, similar to the types of tools that geoscientists use on the surface of Earth uh, to understand better the environment that we're in, understand what the makeup and the composition of uh, is of the uh, lunar surface. And so as we uh, test the suit, we also test these tools and uh, perform various actions that are uh, similar to the way a geoscientist would, uh, would study the Earth. And Don, maybe you could tell us a little bit about what uh, you're wearing underwater today. Oh, this is a, a KM97 hard hat, and we're using this for development of the lunar surface runs. There's a lot less overhead in doing a hard hat dive compared to a pressure suit dive like uh, in the, the XEMU prototype suit that we're working on. And so the hard hat diving allows us to work on runs in between the times that we can get the pressure suit. That does sound easier. We have another question from social media uh, asking what would be the biggest difference between the suit that you're wearing underwater versus the one that would go into space? Um, actually, we don't perceive that, we're, that there will be considerable differences. The idea is that uh, this, this suit has progressed far enough in development. Um, we understand what our needs are on the surface of a planetary body as we explore it. Um, that's based largely on our experiences during Apollo and building on that from the work that we've done, all the uh, two decades of work that we've done on ISS and doing spacewalks. So I think we have a good understanding of uh, what our needs are. And so this suit is fairly well developed and we don't think there are going to be uh, considerable differences between what we're testing in now and what you'll see on the surface of the moon eventually uh, in the near, very near future. That's very exciting. Don, uh, it looks like you've got a flag there in your hand. Can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing with that? Uh, we have the American flag, and we are actually going to do a flag ceremony here underwater as if we were on the moon. And Drew is pounding in the lower part of the flag pole, and then we will affix the upper part of the flag pole to the lower part, and, and we will unfurl the colors of America. How does it feel to be practicing for this? I, I think this is amazing that we're even being able to do this right now. And here you go, Drew. Go ahead and plant the, the colors. You can grab that side. That, good. that looks amazing, guys. Thanks so much for taking time um, to talk with us today. I think we've got one more question uh, before we wrap up. Um, I wanted to know, uh, you know, since you haven't been on the moon, it might be a little bit hard to, to judge uh, how, how well the simulation is. Um, have you talked with any of the uh, Apollo astronauts about their experiences and, and what to expect? Um, in fact, we have. We, uh, on a regular basis, as best we can, we try to get feedback from those that are uh, willing to share that information with us. And um, we're fortunate to have uh, many of the astronauts still living that uh, were on the surface of the moon. And 
we, we learn from them and, and really all of our achievements are based on the successes they had and we really rely on them uh, to help us understand how to do the job they did and uh, try to, to do more uh, more things and, and more science than what they achieved um, back in the in the early 70s. So it's really it's really an advantage, a great advantage for us to have that asset available and we thank them all for their, their services and their sacrifices and and their willingness to uh, to help us go back. And, and even more so than the moonwalking astronauts, we've been talking to the Apollo era flight directors and the Apollo era engineers that helped design the spacecraft and the Apollo era mission control people just to pick up pearls of wisdom that these guys learned the hard way some time ago, a generation ago, and and we're learning what they can tell us so that we can apply it to the Artemis mission. Thank you so much. I think that's a great sentiment to wrap up on. So we're going to um, head out for the day. But uh, if, for those who are watching at home, you can keep up with all of our Artemis developments at NASA.gov. And hopefully we'll be seeing uh, a scene very similar to this on the, on the surface of the moon in, in uh, just a short time. Thanks so much, Drew and Don, for talking with us.